Maple Leaf's Captain John Tavares had to be stretchered off the ice after taking a pretty scary looking inadvertent knee to the head in tonight's playoff game. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. I'm gonna walk you guys through what happened here with John Tavares, talk about what the medical team is doing on the ice and then some key aspects of the anatomy and different types of injuries we think about with these types of situations. You guys know what to do if you enjoy these videos and wanna help support the channel, so let's get right into the play here and take a look. Of course, the knee to his head was completely accidental. We saw Tavares get knocked over here in, and then as the other skater comes in, the knee just catches him square in the front of the head, completely incidental, not intentional. And so just a really unfortunate part of sports. Certainly in these situations when an athlete is unable to protect themselves because a hit occurs that they're not expecting, they're not able to brace their muscles to try to absorb some of that impact, we oftentimes see more severe injuries as a result. So of course here, Tavares doesn't see this coming. He's not able to protect himself adequately and suffers a pretty significant injury. Now beyond the concern for a traumatic brain injury based on how he responded on the ice that we'll get to in a minute, this position when his neck gets forced backwards is hyper extension. So looking upwards at the ceiling is going to be neck extension. And then looking down with your chin to your chest, that's gonna be neck flexion. So here the neck going backwards, forced hyperextension. Now I will say that typically when we see cervical spine injuries that result in paralysis or nerve damage, thinking of you know sports like football or when players are getting checked into the boards, Oftentimes we're seeing a lot of what we call axial load where the impact comes down on top of the head, basically compressing the neck, compressing the cervical spine, sometimes in with a little bit of hyperextension. So here, thankfully Tavares doesn't have any of that. There's no load of his head compressing into the board or compressing into another player. It's pure rapid hyperextension. Now all of this of course looked very concerning on the ice when we saw Tavares down and trying to get up and really prompt great response by the medical staff here. What I want you to pay attention to is what he's basically trying to do first off when he gets out there is assess level of alertness or see if he's conscious. We can see that Tavares looked like he was talking, he was trying to get up, so we can tell that he's at least alert, semi-conscious, but clearly not entirely there. The other thing that we see the medical staff member doing here is basically he's got his hands on either side of Tavares's head. What he's doing here is he's trying to stabilize his cervical spine. Anytime you see a hit like this and a player down on the ice, you're gonna be worried about a cervical spine injury. And so stabilizing that neck so that if there is a fracture, if something's broken, you don't allow the player to inadvertently move more to make it potentially worse. Sometimes with these bad neck injuries in sports, there might be a little fragment of bone in there. And so if the bone gets moved or jams into the spinal cord, you can have a worse injury. So we always try to get out there as quick as possible, stabilize the cervical spine by putting hands on either side to hopefully limit more excessive movement. Now, as we go through this, of course, it was really tough for this team member because Tavares is still alert enough that he's trying to get up. And this is really challenging. I really have to give credit here to the medical staff member out here because what he's doing is he's basically modifying his grip. He's modifying the position of supporting and trying to stabilize the neck. And what he's doing here is almost mimicking with his hand a cervical collar. When you see somebody who's had maybe surgery or an injury and they've got that hard collar, by putting his hand up underneath his chin, he's trying to mimic that effect of stabilizing from a collar. But this is tough because he's trying to calm Tavares down. He's trying to get him to just stay down on the ice, but Tavares is alert enough that he wants to move. He's confused, he doesn't know where he is. And so this is really, really hard to try to maintain that cervical spine stability. And we can see him falling backwards. And thankfully another member of the medical staff gets out there to help out, but they're trying the best they can. I really think they did a great job in the circumstance of trying to stabilize that neck, trying to stabilize him get him down and get him to kind of calm down and stop moving until they could get more help. Here we see him put his fist up in the air before every sports event, we go over what we call the emergency action plan with the medical staff, with the first responders. And we talk about what our signal is gonna be if we're out on the field or we're out on the ice to tell the emergency staff to bring out the stretcher. So here that's what they're doing. The fist up in the air signifies that we need that emergency medical staff, the stretcher to come out there on the ice. Now, at one point, they were able to get him to calm down enough to lay on his back, but you can see here, he probably, again, just being a big, powerful athlete, sat himself up, and they're still doing the best they can to try to stabilize his neck, stabilize his cervical spine, while they're trying to just help him stay as safe and calm as possible during these circumstances, because that's their big fear, that he's got some sort of a neck injury or a neck fracture, that they don't want to make any injury worse by him moving around. But it's also tough because the more you physically restrain somebody, the more they might feel like they need to escape or break free and the more violent they could actually become. So it's a really tough balance when you're there. And so 
Great job here by the medical staff to really try to manage this as best they could. Obviously great news here. We saw him give the thumbs up as he was coming off the ice. So we know from this that he's at least got motor function in that arm to control to give that thumbs up. Also when he's moving, trying to get up off the ice, trying to kind of move around, he's at least displaying that he has gross motor function and there's at least signals getting down there to his legs, to his arms, or else he would have been laying completely motionless on the ice. So while the medical staff is concerned about all that movement, it's almost reassuring because we know that there's not at least like complete paralysis where he's just laying motionless. Anytime we have a downed athlete like this, we're going through what we call our ABCDEs in terms of managing these acute situations. We start with airway, then breathing, then circulation or pulse slash blood flow. D is disability, and then E is environmental exposures. And so the very first thing when we get out there is, are they breathing? Do they have a pulse? And then we go on to the neurologic exam, the concussion, the cervical spine injury, only after we've made sure that they have that airway, that they're breathing, and that they have adequate circulation and a pulse. Now, when we talk about injuries here, of course, concussion. We could see the altered level of consciousness, we could see the impact of the hit from the knee to his head. And so that's gonna be obviously the first thing that we see. Of course, with a concussion, what we have is that brain floating around in that cerebral spinal fluid. And so it's kind of loose inside the skull. And any sort of rapid movement of the head, especially from an impact like that knee, is gonna cause the brain to sort of shift and slam into the inside of the skull, which starts that whole sequence that causes that concussion or traumatic brain injury. That violent hyperextension that we saw from the knee to the head is gonna cause that brain to slam into the inside of the skull as that head moves rapidly, and that causes that sequence of events that results in this traumatic brain injury or concussion. Now, if we look at our cervical spine, that's of course the next thing we're thinking of in terms of injuries here. Our cervical spine actually has this natural curve to it, and part of this curve is to help support some load and some shock absorption from down that axial load into the head. This is why spearing is so dangerous because whenever you lower your head for a spear tackle, you remove that curve and straighten the head, which results in that neck not being able to absorb as much of the load. Now, remember if we look back at this hyperextension, everything in the front of the neck is being stretched as the neck extends backward, and everything in the back side of the neck is being compressed or pushed together. So if we look at the corresponding anatomy, one thing that we can see with cervical spine hyperextensions is injury to this ligament called the anterior longitudinal ligament, that runs down the front side of all the cervical vertebrae. If this head is being smashed back this direction, of course, that's gonna pull and put this ligament into tension, which can cause sprain to that ligament. But then, of course, everything in the back side of the neck or the posterior components of the vertebral column are getting compressed. They're getting squeezed together in compression. That compression can result in fractures to these posterior components of the vertebral bodies, more in the back side of the spine. And so depending on which direction of head movement we see, we get different corresponding injury patterns to the spine. This is looking at a section of vertebrae actually from down in the low back, but it illustrates the point here of the spinal cord running inside those vertebral bodies. So our spinal cord runs down the middle of those vertebrae and then the individual nerve roots that go out to control the muscle function, the sensation of our limbs and our body, poke out from the spinal cord exiting through the vertebral bodies. It's not hard to imagine that if you excessively stress the neck, bending it in one direction more than it's intended to go, you can compress, you can bruise the spinal cord, and of course, if you have a fracture to these bones, those fracture fragments can go in and damage the spinal cord itself. So Tavares is certainly in for a long night of evaluation at the hospital. A CT scan can be done to look more closely at the bones of the cervical spine. MRI is going to better evaluate the actual ligaments and the spinal cord itself. It was definitely great to see he was able to give the thumbs up. We could see that gross motor function from him trying to get up, from him sitting on the ice, and so those are all very positive things here. But you can have strains and sprains of these structures around the neck without any bad nerve injury. So while all these things things look good at least initially, we still have to go through that evaluation. And then of course, think about the concussion because that can result in just as long of an absence as these things like neck sprains and strains. So that's it for the video, everybody. I hope it was educational to kind of walk you guys through what's going on here, teach you a little bit about the body and the process. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.